Richmond Theaters Work and surrounding areas. It's me, Miss Community Clothy. Yeah. Welcoming you to another edition of Community Conversations and joining me on the show. It's the first of the month again. Richmond Mayor L. Douglas Father. How are you? I am fine, Miss Clovia. <laughs> and time passes, doesn't it? Yes, it really does. It really does. And now we're just days away from one major election that's coming up. And I'm not only talking federal, I'm talking local and state yeah. elections as well. And we're going to jump in today and we're going to share for the next 25 minutes the importance of getting out and exercising your right to vote. Absolutely. And uh, as you point out, we got six days and we see that people are voting. I go down through City Hall every day, five and six hundred people already voting. Just on last Saturday, 300 people have voted. Even though we're not an early voting state, and I contend we should change our law to have people being able to actually vote over a two to three week or longer period. Mm -hmm. Why should it be confined to one day? Now, the people who are voting now are voting absentee because they won't be available uh, to vote, and they have categories and <clears throat> box to check. But in Florida, they've been voting for weeks. North Carolina, they've been voting for some period and of time. Michigan and Texas. Well. There are some 31 states that are early voting. We need to modernize what we need to do. Voting should be an enjoyable experience. That's why I like to see the people in the voting officials' uh, capacity smile and to encourage people. It's a day of enjoyment to participate in your government. And again, I want to congratulate you personally for taking the time to get as many people registered to vote, not just John Doe and people who become of age, but you've gone back and gone the extra mile to encourage as many people who have been convicted of felonies to come and vote. You know, when you say convicted of a felony, that conjures up in the mind some heinous act and something mean and nasty and ugly. And you and I know that it takes very little in many instances for a crime to be constituted a felony. But should it be a bar forever for someone no. to vote? No. And you've gotten thousands of people lined up to vote in this election, some over 2,000 that I know of, <laughs> and then those who would be eligible to vote in the next election because that would be that six-month waiting period additional thousands and I want to congratulate you and your oh, station you. for taking the time and you're one of those few people that uh, are involved in media that really go the extra mile and I want to personally congratulate you. Well, thank, thank you, you for all of the great effort you bring. I'm proud of you as a Richmonder, proud of you as a graduate of Virginia Union University and just proud of you as a person. Well, thank you. Mean you're too. making me smile. <laughs> oh, you do a great job. <laughs> but seriously, what we need to do now, folks are registered to vote. We have like uh, five million registered voters in in Virginia. Yes. And 41 percent under the age of 25. Yes. Which means we have the younger generation. They are ready to go, and, that's and they're about ready a million to make a difference. Voters more than were the day when I ran for governor. It gives you an idea as just to how the state has grown, how registration has mm -hmm. grown. And that's why I want to announce on your show today that I'm asking the governor today to extend the voting hours. He has already made the statement that he knows there will be lines. Well, rather than to force everyone to have to be in line by 7 o'clock, let's extend those times for them to be there till 10 o'clock. So I'm calling on the governor to do what other governors have done. They, in Florida, have extended it for four hours. Uh, Governor Christ has made it a 12-hour period of time. I'm saying let's make it from uh, 7 until 10 o'clock. Okay. And everybody in line by 10 o'clock should be counted. Let's not rush to get the results. Let's rush to get the right results. And I want to be certain that Virginians get a chance to vote. Everybody gets a chance to vote. Every vote be counted all over the country. I'm a part of a national Democratic mayor's group that we... Uh, call ourselves a, a truth squad to look at the, the problems that we may have in some places to make certain for instance if you're voting the straight ticket if you do that on some of these places on the ballots you have to check every name on that ticket you just can't say 
I'm going to vote the Republican ticket or the Republican ticket and check Democrat and Republican. Some registrars are saying if you don't check every name, you're going to be discounted. Also, when you go there, you can't have the T-shirt on or badges or anything to give any indication as to who you're going to vote for. I know it sounds archaic, but let's stay within reason and let's stay with what the law requires until we change the law. Take the shirt off. Put it on when you come out. Mm -hmm. Take the pin off. Take the hat off. Go in there and vote for your choice and make certain that you do get up and go out and vote. And take your time and read the ballot. Take your time and read the ballot. You made a very good point earlier on. Yes, we're voting for a president, but you've heard me say it on this show on so many occasions, what happens at the local level many times is far more important mm -hmm. as to what happens there. Because and of course you know that being a mayor and a governor. I know that people call on you to do everything about your roads, about your schools, about your crime efforts. And the, these are things that are not going to happen at the federal level. Also, I want to point out to people that Things are tight. Money is tight. And we know we need to look to see who is out there who has any understanding at all as to what we're doing. And so, as we talk, and we'll talk about it further this morning, uh, again, I want to encourage people to participate. This is a most historic election, not just because it's Barack Obama, but because more people are participating than ever before mm -hmm. in our history. It happens that Barack Obama, who's not running to make history, not running to be the first African American, he's running to be that person who's going to bring about change in the direction of our government, that brings about uniting us all, whether it's our color, whatever our race, our Does religion. Does he say that the Richmond Coliseum, gay or straight? Gay or straight. Uh, Colin Powell made an excellent uh, observation. No, he said Barack Obama's not Muslim as his critics would point out, but suppose he were. Is that a crime? Should he be condemned to not run for office? And so I think it's so important to recognize that at this point in our history, in terms of the need of the world to see leadership to bring about a recognition of a nation that wants to lead, at a time in our history in this country when there's a need to rebuild our older streets and infrastructure, our bridges, Putting that money that we waste in Iraq to work in America, to put that money that has been wasted on Wall Street, mm -hmm. to bring about uh, changes on Main Street, to, to make certain that we lift all boats and have them rise this uh, tide that America most desperately needs in these times. Richmond Mayor L. Douglas Wilder joining us on the show. We're talking about voting, the voting process. Your vote is your voice, it's your rights, it's your choice. We're going to take a break, play a little music, and we're going to come on back. It's Community Conversations. I miss Community Clay.